You're watching ABC4 News, celebrating 75 years. We're less than two weeks into the new year, but the race for mayor in Ogden is taking form. ABC4's Northern Utah correspondent Kate Garner joining us from Ogden with the latest on the races. Kate? Yeah, two campaigns have officially kicked off. Like you were saying, it's still pretty early in the year. And those two campaigns could be going up against current mayor Mike Caldwell if he decides to run for a fourth consecutive term. Now, I want to introduce you to those two candidates. There's Taylor Knuth. He's launching his campaign yesterday, and Angel Castillo launching hers today. Now, Knuth and Castillo are transplants to the Ogden area, but have called the city home for decades. The candidates coming from poverty and knowing what it means to struggle to pay rent want to improve housing costs within the city. Knuth would like to see rental properties built on city-owned land as a way to keep rent low, and Castillo would like to see planning for smaller homes on smaller lots to make it more affordable for first-time buyers. I, I'm, I'm making, making a few promises early on in the race. The first is to listen more than I talk. And I am going to make sure that every quarter that I am going to have an open town hall. I reached out to the mayor's office today. He's out of town, but according to his office at this time, there is no official announcement as to whether he will or won't be running. And we will hear more from these two candidates coming up at six. Reporting live in Ogden, Kate Garner, ABC4 News. Thank you, Kay. New at five, changes to the way tickets will be handed out to political debates. The Utah Debate Commission launching a review into the ticketing process after allegations that the audience for the U.S. Senate debate last year was stacked in favor of Senator Mike Lee and that his supporters broke debate rules with disruptive outbursts. Changes for the next round of debates include reserving tickets for universities to distribute to students and staff for a more balanced audience and creating a plan to handle unruly audience members during debates to stop those disruptions. Salt Lake City Mayor Aaron Mendenhall speaking about the future of the city's climate today at the Outdoor Retailer Expo. Yeah, the show's back in Salt Lake for the first time in five years, along with hundreds of vendors coming back to the city. The Outdoor Retailer is introducing Campfire Chat. So Mayor Aaron Mendenhall sat with Olympic athletes to discuss the possible return of the Games to Utah's capital. The mayor saying she's determined to improve Salt Lake City's climate to make sure it's ready to host the Winter Olympics in the coming years that the snow is there, that the water is clean, and that the air is beautiful and pure, and that when you're up at the resorts, you can look down and see the awesome new capital city, not have to look through a blanket of sludge. The mayor saying Salt Lake City will be at 100% renewable energy by 2030, the same year Utah officials are pushing to bring the Winter Olympic Games back. And in a traffic alert, Utah looking for feedback after the ski season kicks off with long waits at bus stops and standstill traffic up and down the canyons. A survey out now for public feedback on transportation options and changes for Big Cottonwood Canyon. If you're interested in offering your two cents, you can find the survey at cwc.utah.gov. It'll be going through February 10th. Time now for Utah's most accurate forecast with Alana Brophy. Weather rates certified 11 years in a row. Okay, I have about four cents when it comes to <laughs> traffic. The traffic the in the canyon. We've My talked goodness. about this. <laughs> but so many people just so excited because of all the snow we're getting in the mountains. I have a nickel's worth. And yes, people are excited, but that's the fastest way to make me cry. Looking at that <laughs> sign that's like, no parking left at Brighton. Oh, it's killer. So yes, we are adding snow to the high country. But it's rain down here in the Salt Lake Valley. Live look from our ABC4 camera, our Colonial Flag tower camera where temperatures are still in the upper 40s pretty mild in that southerly flow now dealing with rain bringing in plenty of moisture in the last 24 hours we have been hit hard with this atmospheric river more than five inches up at Timp. can you believe that sundance getting 2.8 the southerly flow really favors provo canyon backside of the wasatch doing well cash valley getting almost an inch and a half in garland pleasant grove looking pretty good there we know Cedar City, Provo, South Ogden, throughout the state, north to south, we are benefiting from this moisture as it comes in over an inch in Bountiful and Harriman healthy totals. Why are we seeing this? It's this atmospheric river. You've heard that before. We get this big trough that's over the western United States, but we grab this subtropical moisture, we funnel it in 
to the coast and then we drag it into the beehive state. So it's our moisture source, which is why with that southerly flow, we have milder temperatures and that supports rain. It's our second wave of moisture coming in now and it's going to hold steady through tonight. We've got weather alerts in effect. They're going to hold on through Wednesday evening. A cold front tracking our way, definitely going to bring the chance of some of that rain turning over to valley snow, depending on how cold it gets. And we're keeping our eye on the potential of a squall line. It's going to be an interesting evening. Live look at Bryce Canyon where the snow's been coming down. People were just running around in the snow with their skis behind those buildings. They know that the snow is going to continue. It's an area under a winter weather advisory. All of our mountains actually in Utah and purple under that advisory. So is Castle Country where it's cold. The basin, southwestern Wyoming and Cache Valley. These are areas expecting accumulating snow. You see that winter storm morning in pink. The southern end of the Wasatch and the western Uintas, they're going to get hammered by this. The highest snow totals going to come out of there and that's where avalanche danger really is going to spike. Speaking of an avalanche watch now posted through 6 a.m. tomorrow Tomorrow, and that does include the Provo area mountains. After that avalanche, you know why that was natural occurring. We've got heavy wet snow that continues to pile on top of itself. Not great news. And then you add rain to the mix, which we see in southern Utah right now. It's filled in in the southwest desert over towards Moab and in the north. Again, we're watching the potential of this squall line coming through the western side of Tooele County and towards Box Elder. We've got heavier rain over the lake heading towards Farmington Salt Lake. We're definitely tapping into it, and that doesn't usually happen with a southerly flow, but it's here. Warmer temperatures with those upper 40s. That's why. Can you imagine if it was snow? What a mess. We're going to go that direction. Vernal seeing that with the 20s, 37 in price, upper 40s in St. George. Okay, this is something we usually see during monsoon season, right? The setup here for general thunderstorms, that marginal risk from Nephi to St. George exists today. So that's why thunder snow is potential down there in southwestern Utah. And we know that we're going to see the potential of a squall line, which means rapid visibility lost. Okay, here's the front. It's coming through with this next wave of moisture. It moves on. We get wrap around here and cold air allowed to filter in as we head into the evening. Look at how we stay soggy. This is for the overnight where we start to switch things over and it could be cold enough in the valleys in northern and central Utah where we get snow and accumulating snow at that snow level drop into the valley floor. By tomorrow, moisture gradually starts to taper off. Okay. How about that squall? Let's talk about it. This is a picture of one that happened last year. Gusty winds and the only difference between a squall and a regular snowstorm is the time 30 to 60 minutes. But we know the impacts can really be treacherous and we're going to see the potential for one as we head into tonight. Additional snow. Yeah, the mountains looking at 8 to 16 more. Can you believe that rain in the valleys? But we could see a trace to three inches if we get cold enough air 30s and 40s for those daytime highs along the Wasatch Front and on the eastern side of the state 30s and 40s for the I-15 corridor. 50 in St. George. OK, how about some high pressure? Want to say hi to the high pressure you get to Thursday, Friday, Saturday down there in southern Utah. But the jet stream stays in place, which ushers in another system for the latter half of the weekend and into early next week. We see that for the north as well. Look at those temperatures in the 40s. Hold on. We hit 50s today. Is it January? Yeah, valley rain, mountain snow holding steady and another one wow. on the seven day. But how amazing is that to hit 50 and still get snow in the mountains? It's pretty, it's Utah, Glenn. It's like the best uh -huh. It's what we love, I love it. right? We can yeah. golf, we exactly. can ski in the same day. We like to play. That's how it goes. Wait, where are we golfing? <laughs> this where guy, where am I going? Where am I going? Where am I going? The indoor mini golf <laughs> yeah. course. All right. Thank you, Alana. Time now for a look at sports with Wesley Rowe.